Rolling. So I want to begin just by situating us in the Hudson River Valley where we both live and um, you know, famously home to many great landscape painters of yore. Your work certainly speaks to that heritage and is in conversation with that heritage, but it goes beyond. I mean, it, it, it has a way of also uh, incorporating very personal landscapes like this one painting behind us, which is in our hometown, um, to landscapes that are imagined, to landscapes that are drawn from news and media sources. And so I wonder if you can talk about your work as a landscape painter of both the personal and the global. That's such a great question. And at this point, it's just become more and more that it's inextricable, the global and the personal. Um, I think both affect um, my and most of the people around me. Um, our daily lives in so many ways. And the landscape can hold uh, those personal narratives and global narratives, um, both like emotionally through sort of rich experiences, personally, um, and then also narratives that point to a lot of different kind of complexities of what's happening globally. So for example, the title of the show is Evergreen, um, which alludes to a lot of things. You know, we think about trees, we think about colors. And that was also the name of the shipping company that uh, had the very sizable cargo ship that was stuck in the Suez Canal. So, um, you know, which would be perhaps delivering things that I may acquire at some point too. So these very far flown places are actually cut very close in a lot of ways. Evergreen, I'm glad you brought that painting up because um, to me, it is, I mean, in some ways it is really a key for me with this, with this body of work um, because it evokes a sort of Lisa Sanditz candy coated world that is both for me as a viewer, so rich and so delicious. And I want to look at it and dwell in it. I want to eat it almost, right? Yeah, I mean, Lisa Sanditz colors, bring them on. But at the same time, there's a toxicity yeah. to your use of color. I mean, it's beautifully evidenced in the bear eating the Skittles too, but I find it in all of your work. And so could you speak to that about your relationship with color? That color kind of acts as a lot of different ways. It can be an entry point, you know, like seductive to bring you into the painting. Um, and I hope also that like different narratives or different colors or passages reveal themselves in different ways over time with more experience with the work. Um, so maybe it comes off as something that's like this like dazzling hot pink sky um, in the tiger painting, which also then you start to, it starts to also have this toxicity or this feeling of like forest fires burning perhaps. And of course Skittle Bear, you know, where there's a bear eating um, Skittles in the woods and then that, that color is starting to seep its way into the landscape. You are pointing out to humans kind of here's where we went astray, here's maybe where we went wrong. And you're doing it um, with kindness and with color and um, in a way that feels not aggressive, not cruel, right? But, in, but it's also undeniable where we can look into your work and say, here's how I'm you know, implicated. Exactly, I'm a participant in this and I can do better. If there's any finger pointing, it's pointing like inward and outward, you know. Um, so back to the local and the global. There you go. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, thank you. Thanks, Lisa. No one's, no one's gonna wash us except for our two, all three of our moms. <laughs> My mom won't be able to because she'd have to figure out the internet.